Okay, hi there, and welcome to Synoptic Test 1. Here are 10 microeconomics multiple choice revision questions to check your, your microeconomics ahead of synoptic papers. Here's question one. What is not held constant when aggregating individual firm supply curves to give the short run market supply curve? Please press the pause button. Have a go at question one. OK, so what do we think here? What's not held constant when we derive the supply curve? The answer is C, the price of the product. A, B and D are all factors causing changes in the conditions of supply. They would cause a shift in supply, not a movement along it. Here's question two. Which statement about price elasticity of supply is correct? Please press the pause button and have a go at question two. So, which statement is right? Four statements about elasticity of supply. The correct answer is A. Elasticity of supply reduces as the time period shortens if we give producers less time to respond to an increase in demand. Uh, for example, in farming, there could be a minimum growing period. Elasticity can change in the short run, depends on the level of stocks, for example. Elasticity tends to be perfectly inelastic in the momentary period, but tends to be very elastic in the long run. Here's question three. A government places a tax on a product which causes the supply curve to shift in our diagram here from S1 to S2. Our question is which areas in the diagram shows the tax revenue to the government after the tax? Please press the pause button. Have a go at question three. OK, the right answer to question three is C, the area of tax is the vertical distance between the two supply curves multiplied by the output. The output will be lower, obviously, after, after the tax. The area is therefore B plus C. Area A is consumer surplus after the tax. Here's question four. Which statement about maximum and minimum prices is correct? Again, please press the pause button to have a go at question number four. OK, so we have four statements about maximum and minimum prices. The correct answer is A. Here's a diagram to show it. A maximum price to be effective has to be set below the equilibrium. So it has to be set below P1. If we do that, demand expands to Q2, but supply contracts to Q3, creating a shortage. B, well, minimum price, the market price will be higher. With an effective maximum price, fewer producers likely to enter the market. The returns to the producers are lower. And with a minimum price, you create a surplus. Therefore, you won't need rationing. Here's question five. During a certain period, 20,000 units of a normal good are sold at a price of £15. During a later period, 12,000 units are sold at a price of £20. What could explain this change? Have a go, please, at question five. Press the pause button. So the right answer to question five. Well, the price has gone up, but quantity traded has gone down. So what's, what's the right answer to this question? The answer is D. Let's just go through the wrong answers, first of all. A subsidy lowers the price, so it therefore can't be right. An increase in the price of a substitute, well, that increases the price, but it does, a, does so by increasing demand, so quantity traded would go up. And higher productivity increases supply, reduces costs, brings the price down. It must be D, a uh, supply curve uh, shifts inwards when there's a tax. Price goes up and demand contracts. Here we're halfway through. Uh, here are five through of the firm market structures questions. Second half of the quiz coming up now. In 2018, the average price of diesel used in the road haulage industry increased by 8%, whilst insurance on vehicles fell by 2%. Assuming no other changes, what was the outcome for fixed costs and the outcome for variable costs? Pre please press the pause button. Have a go at question six. So question six is testing your understanding of fixed and variable costs. Insurance is a, f is a fixed cost. Diesel is a variable cost. So the answer is, answer is A. Fixed costs have fallen. Insurance, variable costs have gone up, increased. The answer is A. 
question seven, which feature of production would make it likely that an industry is a contestable market? Have a go, please, at question seven by pressing the pause button. So what makes it more likely that an industry is a contestable market? The right answer here is C. One of the features of a contestable market is that the sunk costs or the, if like the exit costs of, of uh, entering the market are low. In other words, the sunk costs from joining the market are low. If you decide to leave, the costs are pretty insignificant. All of the other factors actually make it harder for new firms to come into the market. Question eight, a firm maximizes its profits by maximizing its revenue. What does this imply? Please press that pause button one more time and have a go at question eight. So this time we're maximizing profit, but we do so at the output which maximizes revenue. The right answer here will be D, marginal cost is zero. If um, you maximize profit when MR meets MC, so therefore you maximize revenue where so you maximize revenue when MR is zero. You maximize profit where MR is M equals MC. So those two outputs must be the same. So it must be where marginal revenue cuts the x-axis, which implies that marginal cost is zero. There are no variable costs, in which case the average cost falls because there are the only fixed costs of production. Two more questions. What is an example of horizontal integration? Have a go, please, at question number nine. Horizontal integration, the best answer here, well, the correct answer is D. A restaurant chain buys another restaurant chain. Of course, news in 2019 that uh, Pret-a-Manger, or Pret, has bought the rival sandwich chain Eat. That'll see Eat disappear from the high street. Pret is looking to, to really fast forward its veggie Pret format and sees Eat as a way of doing that. Interesting example. Uh, and finally, question 10, what is an essential feature of the principal agent problem? Have a go, please, at question number 10, our final question. OK, what do you get for 10? Hopefully you're getting close to full marks here. Principal agent problem is when the owners of a business, perhaps the shareholders, cannot observe directly or easily what the agents, perhaps the managers, are doing in terms of price output research and development, advertising, and so on. So the essential feature of the principal agent problem is C, the separation between ownership and control. Distant shareholders are unable to fully understand or keep up to speed with the day-to-day -day decisions of a company. Here are the 10 topics that we've covered in this video. There'll be several of these ahead of the synoptic paper in micro and several in macro. We're looking to give you lots of practice on your data response and your multiple choice. So thank you. Thank you for joining in this video.